My name is Chris Harrison, I'm from AlloryTutors.com and welcome to this video on empirical formula. So this video is going to show you how to calculate the empirical formula and we're going to go through the um, a worked example as well uh, and obviously you need to know what an empirical formula is. So an empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound and it's as simple as that and you might look at some empirical formula and you think what on earth is that because it looks really weird it doesn't look as though it chemically it chemically works but don't be kind of so disheartened so when we look at the example you'll see what i mean it looks really odd and then um, i'll show you kind of how to how to work them out and hopefully it shouldn't look so weird um but the key thing with this is you need to work out moles so you need to know how to calculate moles for these things so we've got a compound and it contains 0.34 grams of carbon, uh, 0.057 grams of hydrogen and 0.46 grams of oxygen. And what we need to do is find the empirical formula and the molecular formula as well. So we're going that one step further. Now I've got to point out at this stage that sometimes they might give you a percentage. Um, if it's a percentage, that's fine. You treat it exactly the same as if it was a mass, so you don't change it whatsoever. Okay, so it doesn't change in terms of the method. All right, so the first thing you have to do is, with all empirical formula, is to put your headings of the elements that you've got in your compound. So the elements we have here are carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So I'm going to put them here. So I'm going to put carbon, hydrogen, oxygen on that side. Okay, so. That's the first thing, that's our header. Now what we have to do is we have to work out the moles, it's the first thing we do. Now to work out the number of moles of something, you do mass divided by MR or AR in this case. Okay, so we're gonna do mass divided by the relative atomic mass will give you the number of moles. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. So uh, let's put our numbers in, and um, we'll write this in blue to make it stand out a little bit better. The mass of carbon, we said was uh, 0.34, so we're going to put 0.34 grams on the top. Mass of hydrogen um, is 0.057 grams of hydrogen, and the mass of oxygen is 0.46. Okay, and we're going to divide all of them by their atomic masses. So carbon's atomic mass is 12. The atomic mass of hydrogen is one, and the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Now, we put all these into the calculator, uh, and then we'll be able to find the um, number of moles of each of them. So the number of moles of carbon uh, should come out at 0.028. Okay. Uh, the number of moles of hydrogen is 0.057, because it's just dividing it by one. And the number of moles of oxygen is uh, 0.46. There we are. Okay, so, um, sorry, that should be not 0.046. I can't even read my own notes. So it's 0.029. There we are. Okay, right, so it's 0.029. So we've got the moles of everything. Now, with all empirical formula, what we have to do is we have to divide by the smallest number of moles. Now the number of moles here, which is the smallest, is this one here, which is 0.028. So what we do is we divide all of them by 0.028. 0.028, there we are. And 0.028. Okay, so we put all these into our calculator and we should get a, a ratio. Now this one obviously comes out as one. This one comes out pretty much close to two. It's really, really close to two, so we can round it to that. And again, this one comes out um, one. So we've got our ratio here. This is not our empirical formula. So our empirical formula would be um, C, because we've got one C, H, two, because we've got two hydrogens, and then O. Okay, the, there is our empirical formula. And you must write that because you don't get a mark if you don't write your empirical formula. Okay, then it asks us also to do something extra, and it says we need to work out the molecular formula as well. Now to work out the molecular formula, um, we have to find the uh, multiplier. Um, because they told us what the MR is of our molecular formula. Now to work out the multiplier, we need to work out the MR of our empirical formula. Now if you um, work this out, you've got carbon's 12, hydrogen is 1, we've got two of them, so that's 14, plus the oxygen, um, which is 16, and you add all that up and it should come to 30. So that's the MR of our empirical formula. Now to work out the molecular formula, or the multiplier, 
we need to take the um, MR of the molecular formula and we need to divide it by the MR of the empirical formula. So what we do is we do 180. I'm going to divide that by 30, because that's the MR of that, uh, and that should come out as 6. That's our multiplier. And all we do with this number is we just multiply all the uh, elements in our empirical formula by 6, uh, and then we should work out our molecular formula. So in this case, CH2O, so that would be C, oops, getting carried away, uh, C6, which is 6 carbons, H12, because we've got 2 hydrogens, so 2 times 6 is 12, and then we've got O6, C6, H12, O6. Now, the biologists amongst us will probably recognise that molecule as glucose, um, and so actually from this bit of information here, we've managed to deduce the molecular formula of a compound, obviously knowing the mass uh, of the full molecule. This is obviously can be quite useful, um, and well, this can be obtained, should I say, from a mass spectrometer. So actually we're making links between mass spectrometry uh, and empirical formula. But um, there we go, that's it, that's empirical formula, as simple as that. Bye-bye.